Welcome to Liberating Faith Podcast. I'm so glad that you have tuned in to listen. I'm Dr. Michael Stenhammer, and I have studied the Word of Faith movement for a number of years. I was part of it. I've done a lot of research. And I want to share some thoughts and insights here that might be of help to you. So listen in and see what you think. I want to talk about how to identify if a church is a prosperity gospel, word of faith church or not, or a minister that you watch on YouTube or listen to. How would you know if that person belongs within the word of faith? prosperity gospel worldview or not? Well, it's a great question. Some people have even posted that to me, asked me to address it. And I want to begin by saying that it's a very complex question or or the, the task of identifying a prosperity gospel church is not that easy. Uh, some people think it's so easy you can just look at a you know preacher if they're greedy or not and then you would know but that's stereotypical so th- it's not that easy so first we had to begin by saying that the prosperity gospel takes a wide range of expressions i've been to prosperity gospel churches that are meeting in amazing structures uh, I've been to the largest one in in the U.S., for example, which is just you know sparkling with stuff. I've been to many who have these you know this this um, kind of symbols of wealth and success and all that. It's in the air. But I've also been to churches in the global south, particularly in Africa, where you have um, mud. Uh, you know the the walls are made of mud and the floor is a sand floor, and people are really struggling with you know, with their finances and things like that. And it's also a prosperity gospel church. So you you have to be aware that it can take different kinds of expressions and it's not that easy just on the outside to necessarily identify who's in and who's out, right? So that's the one thing that I, I just want to start out with, just noting that this is tricky. Another reason why it's tricky is because there is no prosperity gospel denomination. Uh, there is no statement of faith that the, the, there's a network of churches and ministers who agree to a certain statement of faith that will clearly say that they belong within the word of faith worldview and theology. In fact, if you check most word of faith, prosperity gospel, uh, you know, people's statements of faith, if they have any on their website or in their church or whatever, you'll find that they are just generally non-denominational charismatic Pentecostal. You know, it's just generally most of them, their prosperity gospel beliefs have not come to the point where they are expressly putting that in in a statement of faith. So you you will find that even though these teachings are very influential, uh, there's not it's very difficult to identify a certain group or so on. So usually what scholars do is that we try to identify the personal network. So you identify an individual as as clearly standing within the prosperity gospel theology, and then you see what kind of individuals are uh, or church movements are networking with that person or in somehow standing in, in their tradition in a sense, in their life. So that's one way of identifying it. Who are they looking to as as their source or who are they repeatedly identifying with or, or you're connecting with, that usually can be a sign as well. The other problem, though, is that many even deny preaching anything that is prosperity gospel. Okay, so most people, uh, well, not most, but many, uh, you know, feel that it has a bad reputation. So I even know one who, oh, no one, but I heard of a, the, an, in an interview with a very worldwide known uh, famous prosperity preacher who denied, uh, you know, do you preach the prosperity gospel? And they answered, no, <laughs> you know, I don't. Uh, but they do, with all, with all definitions, they do. So but people don't want to own the title uh, prosperity preacher or prosperity gospel. So I think that that's one thing that makes this also a, a bit more complex and complicated for us to have to sort that out. And some I have found also don't know that they are preaching the prosperity gospel. They just believe they're preaching the word. Yeah, one as one pastor is saying, I'm just telling you, you know, I'm just teaching the word. I'm just telling you like it is. I mean, this is not the prosperity gospel or any other kind, you know, this is the gospel, you know. So some people don't even know. And I think it's uh, also helpful to look at a distinction. 
uh, between what uh, the scholar Kate Bowler calls the hard and the soft expressions of the of the Word of Faith Prosperity Gospel. That the, what she calls the hard, I think we can define it as a system. Uh, somebody who is well aware of spiritual laws and the system and what steps to take, how to implement these principles, how so you can reach the blessed life, right? Th- that's very systematic. And the, the those who stand within that kind of hard expression of the prosperity gospel tend to be more focused on teaching and just having systematic teachings and the principles and the how-tos and all these kinds of stuff, steps to this, keys to that, and very practical and very studious in a sense that invites people to study, to, to get into uh, you know the revelation knowledge that will reveal this. And there's a, a direct and hard connection between rightly used faith and applied faith and the results it will bring it's just you know right faith will always produce a certain kinds of results in you know health wealth and happiness basically a softer version would be more um more encouraging more focus on just overall wellness and, and even though the, it would share the same worldview the expression is it's not as systematic uh it the the preachers will be more you know encouraging and that kind of thing even though they the other ones might not be discouraging that's not what i'm saying but i'm just saying that the, the message is not so much into teaching perhaps more preaching a proclamation um yeah, things like that and and they don't uh, necessarily uh even use the same kind of terminology always and so on but it shares the same worldview even though expression is much softer and and so on and and kate bowler one of them she's saying that this is the one that is you know mostly spreading out and i would agree and this i find is the most difficult to identify because they the the soft prosperity preachers do not want to like to be you know uh, labeled prosperity uh, they, they are using other kinds of labels or distinctions or so on. So having considered all this, we end up with knowing that we will probably better speak of prosperity gospels in plural uh, and theologies in plural of prosperity because it has such a wide difference. So here, this is why sometimes I use the term word of faith to kind of narrow down the focus on what I'm doing. It's not just any kind of emphasis on prosperity, but what takes place within the camp called the word of faith. So that makes this a bit complex. But going on from just identifying these complexities, uh, let's move on now and talk about, okay, so what can be the signs of a prosperity gospel preacher and a prosperity gospel uh, church or movement, okay? So considering that I look at this as a worldview, what I mean by that is that this is carried in your whole being. So somebody who's really into the word of faith, prosperity gospel, they will carry this in their whole persona, in their whole being, the way they speak, the way they act, their values, in their stories, uh, you know, you carry it in your symbols and so on, not just in your expressed beliefs, even though that's, of course, very important too. So I want to just take that perspective and I'm going to point out a few things that I think are important. If you want to go deeper, I actually recommend reading my book. Well, you know, it's not for everybody, but if you want to penetrate a bit deeper into these kinds of perspectives of analysis, that might be a good, you know, just food for thought. So if I come across a church uh, or a minister and I'm asked, is this a prosperity gospel church or not? I I will give you a few points what I'm looking for. I I will start to look at key symbols. I don't just begin li- listening to what they're saying because sometimes they can preach and many of them preach just general Christian messages. So in any given Sunday, it's not clear that you will hear a prosperity gospel message, right? That is just prosperity. Uh, so and many are just preaching a general uh, charismatic Pentecostal message or evangelical, in fact. So it, it's not that easy to start looking at the message or the doctrine. You might start out looking at some key symbols. And I'm looking for symbols that will speak about a certain kind of self-awareness or their own identity. Because identity is at the very center of the prosperity gospel, that to know who you are in Christ. And that knowing that you are ruling and reigning with Christ, that you have regained the dominion and the authority, that should be seen in your symbols, the way you act, the way you express yourself. Uh, prosperity gospel preachers are very bold. They are very, they own 
okay? Uh, because they, um, uh, some people might even call them arrogant. I, I'm not saying that all of them are, but but there's a certain kind of personal boldness and expression in the persona that would symbolize their understanding or what it means to have authority to rule and reign as a king in this life. So you can look at uh, the you know the personal uh, habitus, the way they're they're expressing their, bo their body posture, the way they kind of you know fill the space in a sense, right? And, and with a with a symbolic kind of expression of power. You might also look for even signs of royalty or signs of dominion or power in this world. Uh, there are studies who point out symbols like uh, the the eagle that the eagle is very common in many prosperity gospel churches especially in parts of africa but also the u.s and other places because it symbolizes strength it symbolizes victory it carries so many of these themes of the prosperity gospel so look for an eagle you know so if you find an eagle well score you, you got a prosperity gospel church <laughs> well you might also look for gold Gold is a very powerful symbol, whether it be literal gold or just the gold, you know, the, the color of gold or something. So things that symbolize royalty, things that symbolize, uh, you know, dominion. Uh, the globe, the, the earth, the globe is also very common in prosperity gospel churches, uh, whether it be the literal globe, uh, you know, or an image of a globe uh, or flags. Flags from many different nations that symbolize this, this in, in international impact and also sometimes symbolize dominion, okay? I'm not saying that every church that has flags is a prosperity church because I know uh, churches that are definitely not prosperity that have flags that symbolizes where they have mission outreaches, okay? So I'm not saying that every church that has these. I'm saying when you, you, you take in all these kind of symbols and they together will give you a overall picture, right? So you're looking for signs, for symbols of, of power, symbols of royalty, symbols of influence in the world. Uh, some are saying also that sometimes Sometimes the uh, you know uh, technology can be a sign that if you really uh, show off very expensive technology and and especially uh, you know cameras and things like that they will not just symbolize that you're recording the service they might also symbolize that you're actually sitting on power and influence in the world and things like that. Well, anyway. You might also want to look for other kind of symbols of, of success and wealth, right? Uh, whether they be expensive clothing, uh, whether they be, you know, uh, just in the sanctuary, things that will, you know, just give that, that kind of feeling that you're meeting people and you're entering into a world that is a world of success and accomplishment. Okay, whether there be titles that will symbolize that, whether, you know, there are so many ways you can symbolize success. And this also takes cultural expressions, right? So uh, signs of success in, 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 the, in, in the Western world might not be the exact same signs of success that you will find in the global south, for example. But you would look for those cultural signs of, of success. Uh, you know, something like that. Uh, and also, and within the key symbols, I, I would look at the role of the preacher or the leader. What kind of role do they play? Because within the Word of Faith worldview, uh, and I come back to this over and over again, but the preacher plays a very specific place. They are placed there uh, and they see themselves as carriers of the worldview. Uh, that the preacher makes themselves, in a sense, the the one who exemplifies this world that they are preaching about. So it becomes a very eye-centered, you know, kind of theology where the preacher takes a lot of space and places themselves as this example. And because of that, you will find when you talk to prosperity gospel believers, you will find how their faith is aligned to certain kind of minister very often. You cannot talk about faith or interpretation of scripture for a long time before they will start to refer to and quote some of their favorite preachers because the word of faith worldview is very intimately directed or connected with a few word of faith individuals. So, so you will also find then that a prosperity gospel service is often centered around the individual leader or preacher. Uh, you know, you, you often find um, the portrait of the main leader. 
somewhere, you know, very centrally placed maybe, or uh, it's just there. I mean, so the, it will be, you know, uh, but again, to repeat, I mean, there are churches who are not prosperity, who are really focused on their leader and preacher. I'm saying when all these things play together, they give you a general kind of, of, of view. So some of those key symbols before the, you know, people even open their mouth, you can identify some of these key things. I, I'm also looking for uh, certain kind of actions you know, practices that, that will kind of signify to me that we're in a, a prosperity gospel world, right, in this church or in this minister. And, and one of them that has come up as, as a key is actually a very positive approach, a very positive mindset to be positively, you know, uh, optimism, for example, right? Hope, a hopeful attitude. Um, there's one pr- uh, scholar who said that w- when they went to research prosperity gospel churches, they were surprised that they have never found such joy or so many smiles. They said the moment they enter, you know, a prosperity gospel church, they meet a smile and somebody who's saying, you know, good morning. And when you ask, you know, how are you? Well, uh, I'm, I'm blessed beyond, abu- you know, I'm blessed and abundant or, uh, you know, I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm, I'm, fa- I'm highly favored. I'm blessed. I'm highly favored or, you know, things like this. And so there's so much of the, this, this joy and smiles and somebody called this, uh, this message, a salvation with a smile kind of message. So there's that sense of, of optimism, the sense of joy. So the, the, that kind of action, I will be looking for that you might call it a symbol or i put it as actions but that kind of positive mindset where you enter a very upbeat positive um, world uh so connecting with that you entering also in certain kind way uh, a certain way of using language okay there are certain kinds of uh and i'll come back we'll talk about positive confession in a moment but just looking at a certain way of 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 uh uh, signifying prosperity or success with different kinds of words. So Paul Gifford is a anthropologist who has done done significant work on the prosperity gospel, especially in Africa. And he, in his research, listed a couple of, uh, I think, about twenty three names or twenty three terms that he he noted in his research that were uh, words that refer to the same thing that refer to success or prosperity sorry to the prosperity without using the word prosperity so he, uh, let me read them to you he said that the word progress breakthrough success achievement destiny favor dominion blessing excellence elevation promotion increase expansion plenty open doors triumph overflow abundance newness, fulfillment, victory, power, possession. He says that all these terms are used sometimes to refer to the same object, the object of the prosperous life. All right. And I'm sure that you have heard many of these. And I I might add two more that kind of that kind of comes up in the research as well. And that's the word harvest and the word to flourish. So that you might find either, or you might find more, and please pop them in the comments here if you if you know other words that are used that you find are language that is used to refer to the same object of of prosperity. So I will be looking at some of those kind of uses, you know, some of that kind of language, uh, those kind of words that will be interesting. But I also look at how you speak about um, faith, because within the, at least the hard expressions of the word of faith worldview, faith is more than just trusting God, it's also an, a power, an instrument. I call this instrumentalism, where you can use things to accomplish a certain purpose. And faith is that one of those main things that you can use. So you will hear people speak about faith in a very unusual way. Uh, they might speak about faith sometimes that it equals to trust. So mo- every Christian will be familiar with that. But you will hear a certain kind of twist Sometimes or a certain kind of flavor to the language of faith that if you're not born and raised in the word of faith, prosperity gospel, it will feel new and unusual. Like you can get a question like, have you applied faith to this situation? All right, let's release our faith here. Okay, let's pray for this person. You know, somebody comes up maybe for prayer and the preacher says, okay, let's pray. Let's agree in faith and let's release faith now. I mean, so the moment you use the word release faith, you're looking at faith as something in and of itself that can be released. Or talking about levels of faith, like let's raise the faith level or all these kinds of stuff. So the way people 
speak about faith as something in of, of itself that can be used as an instrument. The moment you instrumentalize faith and speak about it that way, that was signal to me that we're getting close to the word of faith worldview. Having said all this, I need to put in a disclosure or something like that. And that is that uh, people can pick up language and things without knowing what they're doing. So I know people sometimes they use these expressions, you know, apply faith here and so on. But their theology and the worldview is not the prosperity gospel word of faith worldview. They just picked it up from somebody else who used it. So I'm not saying that just because somebody uses this, we should label them a prosperity gospel person. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying, again, let all these become factors that, you know, create this mosaic. And once uh, you put them, all these pieces together, if they fit, then you, I think you have the prosperity gospel worldview identified. So something else with language, which is very, very essential, and very uh, kind of identifying is, of course, positive confessions declarations decreeing de declaring something right prophesying your future however you want to phrase this yeah and what is that that is when you are using your language to create spiritual realities okay so within the prosperity gospel worldview uh words are creative equal to god's words so the God's creative words uh, have been given to us. Oh, that 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 ability to create has been given to us. So we release our faith to create spiritual realities by our words. So what you find then are, are actions of speech, speak speech actions within prosperity gospels what, uh, messages. Right. So you might turn to your neighbor and give them a positive confession. Uh, you, you might have you know during. Um, uh, uh giving i'm going to come back to that later but then you you will have you know s speaking over your gift for example uh and you will often find that prayer times of prayer goes from praying to god into positive confessions and declarations i decree this i declare this i confess this i speak this over your life i i speak this and this and so on so prayer can in a in a prosperity church takes a shift from speaking communicating to god into this uh level of decreeing and declaring I have to make certain I'm not misunderstood here. I believe there are moments where we will declare something or decree something in the name of Jesus. Like, you know, commanding an evil spirit to go. You know, you, you command in the name of Jesus. So I believe in that. What I'm saying here is in the Word of Faith worldview, it's not just at moments you, on the command of Jesus, you command. You become an echo of Christ. That's not what I'm talking about. That's general Pentecostal charismatic spirituality. What I'm talking about is this worldview where your words are creative and therefore you intentionally uh, release words and your words create these spiritual realities. So that's, that's what I'm talking about with positive confession. And so in, in, in hardcore word of faith churches, you might even have positive confessions on the big screen and people are standing up and confessing things over them. I, I you know, I'm ahead. I'm not the tail. I'm, I'm blessed coming in, blessed going out. You know, all the, you know, da, 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 da. They can be written confessions and declarations as well, or just, you know, sit, repeat after me kind of things. And the, the minister uh, leads people into sessions of positive confession. Another thing that, that you will look at when it comes to different actions and practices is that you look for actions that are, are focusing on healing and health and well-being. So you will find uh, uh, usually a substantial amount of time is, is given to uh, ministering to sick people and focusing on you know, wellness uh, and, and talking about that uh, and speaking about lo those things, but also in, in, in practice, uh, you know, ministering to to people who are uh, who are sick or struggling somehow so there's a a focus and action on on healing what we can call healing practices because healing takes a very essential uh, uh place it's very essential in the word of faith worldview to 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 uh, to gain healing but also to to live a life of health of course success uh is very very central and so practices of success so often it's a focus on entrepreneurship. Uh, it can be of, of you know, businesses. Uh, that can eat. So in these churches, you might have workshops of things that people before would think never fit within a church, like how to start a business, how to, uh, you know, uh, do well in real estate, 
how to get your first loan and buy your first house and or get a car or things like this. There's a lot of entrepreneurship and, and kind of business oriented uh, teachings and practices that are very common. So often a, a prosperity gospel church would also give uh, plenty of time for entrepreneurship. And I know a big, um, very large uh, denomination actually, or church network arising out of Africa, where at least previously on every Sunday morning, they turn, they, they instructed you to turn to your neighbor and ask them, have you started your business yet? Because the idea was that every church, whatever you do in life, you should also run a business on the side. So again, I don't put any value into that. I'm just saying that th this is a focus on entrepreneurship and of, of, of reaching some kind of material success, not just by spiritual means, but also by putting your gifts into practice and so on. So we're coming now to some of uh, the more the things that people usually look for, and that's giving uh, th practices related to money. All right. So prosperity gospel churches, usually uh, people think that it's just about the money, right? Uh, and there are some, sadly, who are, but many are, are way more holistic in their approach. They look at all of life. Uh, many that I even know personally are not greedy. Uh, they believe that this is the gospel and they use this for the glory of God. And then, of course, you have some who are really, op uh, you know, uh, trying to achieve... Uh, their own success in a sense uh, on the back of others so you have a, a a spectrum of people here but within prosperity gospel churches you will find there's certain kind of rituals or actions uh connected with giving that you do not find in other churches one of them that i noted is a longer uh, message about giving often it can be like a mini sermon uh, I, we, I remember recently being listening in a service, uh, being in part of a service where uh, a very well-known prosperity gospel preacher was was preaching, and I, so they 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 preached for about 30, 35 minutes. So I thought, wow, you know, as they ended, I thought that was a bit short because I know that this man usually preaches longer. Then I realized, hey, wait a minute, that was not the sermon because <laughs> now we're taking up an offering. So. Uh, then he preached for about one hour and 20 minutes after that. So you find that within these rituals surrounded giving, uh, and when I mean ritual, I mean just action, certain kind of practices, right? You find usually a prolonged period of teaching uh, about giving. And with within that teaching of giving, you will definitely hear connections with uh, spiritual law of sowing and reaping and things like this. And I'm going to come back to the content of messages very soon, but I just want to look at that there's those rituals. So there's teaching on giving that, that usually precedes the, the offering itself. Uh, but also you'll find here commonly uh, some positive confections, you know, raising up your offering, speaking about, you know, that, that this, you know, this is my seed. This is my seed. I give it, you know, and this will bring a uh, harvest back to me. 30, 60 and 100 fold return, you know, will come back to me as I give this. And, you know, things like this, this kind of rituals around giving. Um, uh, there, there are other kinds uh, where, you know, sometimes uh, the expression of joy is very important because God loves a cheerful giver. So you will find, you know, people, you know, dancing while giving or dancing up to the platform and give and things like this. And, and some of that is really, really helpful. I mean, we should uh, develop a good theology around giving, but here it's definitely framed within the prosperity gospel perspective of stuff. So around giving, there's so many and even churches develop their own practices and i would love to hear what you have experienced there there are so many and of course they also differ from culture to culture but you will find that a prosperity gospel church uh will have a developed uh kind of actions around uh the, the time of giving now there are some soft prosperity gospel churches that have found that people take doesn't feel very comfortable during the time of giving so they have somehow changed their, uh, you know, their way that they receive their offerings. So th there might be a, a change here. Uh, and, and they are getting their money through maybe selling tickets to their events. And they're, they're getting money in other ways uh, than the, the classical way of donating or giving. So anyway, just wanting to note that. So anyway, so with something else that's really, really important uh, when it comes to the actions is the expectations on the supernatural. So Word of Faith churches 
tend to emphasize the supernatural work of the of of the Holy Spirit. So it's very common uh, of of getting revelations. And by a revelation, you will usually mean getting a new insight that you did not have before. It's not always it has to be brand new. Like the, the theological definition of revelation is usually the revelation, the revealing of something new, where illumination will be the light on something that has been revealed. But he, within this context, you use the word revelation for just uh, a, a new insight, whether it be a theological one or a personal one. Right. So but you will hear this coming into uh, language like God showed me this or, you know, the preacher begins like the, I'm preaching this today because God showed me and God told me to preach this to you. And there's m- much about visions, dreams, uh, angels, uh, m- you know, encountering angels and having dreams and visions. Uh, there are so many of these prosperity gospel preachers who have either gone to heaven or have revelations of, you know, the supernatural and things like this. And uh, again, this is just general Pentecostal. Uh, many Pentecostals charismatics, uh, you know, uh, you know, practice, you know, these kinds of spiritual gifts or whatever you want to call them, prophetic gifts. Uh, so that's in itself is not something particular. But usually it's the content that signifies to me that this is prosperity gospel, because usually it is more particularly geared towards, uh, you know, the achievement of blessing, the achievement of a successful life. The um, usually it's also like you getting a principle. I learned, you know, the Holy Spirit showed me this principle. This, this, you know, there's like getting a key for something. It's usually, usually it's an emphasis on learning a secret that had not been known before that's very common in the word of faith worldview because underlying the word of faith worldview is that this teaching has not been known it has been hidden but it's now been known so practicing revelations is usually about learning a new secret a new key uh, that's of course in scripture but but has not been known so I find that to be very, very common. And, and then, uh, like I mentioned before, that the emphasis on study, uh, where you study and you give a lot of time within the hard expressions of prosperity gospel, you, you, the um, one practice is basically that sometimes church can feel like a lecture, you know, almost where the, the, the preacher is just giving a, you know, a very detailed study of something, uh, very often quoting Greek and Hebrew original languages and, and just kind of detailed stuff. Sometimes really just nitpicking scripture and going into the very detail of a verse and even a word and spending much time on that and just expounding the Bible. And that's a very common, um, action a very common practice because within the worldview is that belief that if we only know if if we can get the right knowledge of who we are then we can live in the blessed life because we're living beneath our privileges because we lack the knowledge and the revelation knowledge that we need so that understanding uh, births a certain kind of practice which is the the spreading of of knowledge and usually through uh you know bible study and so on. I'm going to come back a bit to revelation knowledge, uh, maybe a bit bit later, but still that, 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 that's an important part. So Bible study, go to this scripture, this scripture, you know, uh, so most prosperity gospel churches are very oriented towards, uh, scripture and scripture exposition, uh, you know, so anyway, coming back to uh, these, uh, you know, w- w- majorly what we're looking at, we began by looking at some of the key symbols before people even open their mouths. Then I look at key actions. Uh, you know, what what are some of the main actions going on here? And then finally, I look at the content. I'll look at the beliefs. Uh, OK, so I look at what what is actually the content of the preaching. Uh, what is the what are they actually saying? And I will be looking for signs of uh at least within the hard prosperity it's easier to identify but i would look for spiritual laws i would look for teachings and things that shows that this person believes that the, the spiritual world is operating by certain kinds of predictable laws whether it be the law of sowing and reaping or whether that be you know the law of the spoken word confession that every word spoken will generate you know and 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 um and create be creative uh, so i would look for signs of uh, 
you know, and in the teachings that it's a connection with spiritual laws and it can be called spiritual principles. It can be called, uh, you know, um, I forgot what else it can be called, but just that general understanding that there are laws of success that, that has to be learned and to operate and that these are not just metaphors. The sowing and reaping is not just an image or a metaphor for something within the action of God. These are literally laws that govern life, right? So I, I would look for that. And also, uh, again, coming to faith, how faith is spoken about as a, a causative agent, as what I mean by that is a power that can cause change in and of itself, faith itself. And, and within the Word of Faith worldview, then faith is extracted from the personal relationship with God into being something in and of itself. So, so that, that doesn't mean that there is a relationship with God in trust as well. I'm just saying that the faith is more than that. It's also this power that can be used and released. So also, again, revelation knowledge that, that makes this um, uh, a, a very practically oriented message. So messages are usually uh, very practical about steps to take and how to uh, you know, apply things, right? So it begins with this identity question, like who you are in Christ. And you are, uh, you know, you're se seated with Christ uh, and then ruling and reigning with Christ. Uh, and be because of that, you need to understand that. You need to get a revelation of that. And so, to, and once you get the revelation, you need to be empowered with certain kinds of practices and how to live out this life. How do you live as a king in this life, right? So, so that will be content of the preaching, will be uh, practical things and how to apply, how to do this. And you will hear, of course, in, in, the, in the content of the preaching, you will listen to their testimonies because Word of Faith preachers usually use a lot of personal narratives. They will speak about uh, answers to prayer. They will speak about different miracles, things uh, that they have been part of themselves or others. So there's a lot of um, uh, stories that, w that are shared. And so I would listen to those stories and see what, 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 what kind of worldview and theology do the stories carry? Uh, you know, is, what kind of values are carried by those stories? So I would really be keen and in listening into uh, the different kinds of stories. So that, that usually also signifies and that carries a lot of, uh, you know, emphasis. So what, one thing that is very common in the Word of Faith messages is the belief that you are, you have the right to, uh, you know, health, wealth and happiness. You have the right to it. Jesus has already accomplished it, and it's your birthright. It's it's um, it's given. It's paid for. It's yours. So, if you when the moment you hear any kind of signs leading to that, that you know healing is your right or prosperity is your right, or you know it's 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 not just a gift or grace of, from the mercy of God. It's your entitlement. It's yours. It's your privilege. And if you don't have it, that means you're living beneath your priv privileges. Yeah. So that, that's something else that would signify the word of faith worldview, where the, you have a certain, uh, as, as you, you know, a child of God, you have a certain, certain things that are your rights and your privileges as a child of God. And, and word of faith is there to help you, uh, you know, reach them and to live within them. So that understanding and those kind of messages that taps into that kind of understanding, that would signify to me a word of faith church. And if you want to go even more particular, and I'm going to end with this, is that a, a, a more hardcore, you know, Word of Faith church would put usually an emphasis on human beings being spirit beings. That Well, it's called trichotomy, that human beings are spirit beings having souls and living in bodies. So there will be a, a continuous emphasis on humans uh, being spirits, having souls, living in bodies. So you will hear in messages that that kind of sometimes popping up. Uh, like, you know, as a spirit being, da, 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 or the Lord speaks to your spirit and, or in your soul or your body. And there will be those kind of divisions of the human being. And those things would definitely signify. And some scholars are saying that this is the most distinctive uh, teaching and content in Word of Faith theology is their belief that human beings are spirit beings having souls living in bodies. Uh, that, that would be, you know, uh, a very, uh, you know, essential part of their teaching. So there is much more to say about this, and I, I will. I'm also making a shorter uh, video on this. That that if you found this to be too long, 
well, that would be <laughs> too late <laughs> if you listen this far. But I'll try to point out some more simple things maybe. But this is uh, a few things that I think are helpful trying to narrow down uh, what who are within this worldview or not. And I mean, if you're going to even deeper, I, I'm making the case that there is a general big story out of which uh, you know, word of faith people live. And you might want to listen into that kind of longer teaching where I kind of expand on that big story of the faith and prosperity gospel, because I believe that that is what actually defines their worldview and also to know who's in and who's out in a sense. How much in how much are they leaning into that story? And you might also want to unpack things like a certain kind of logic birthed by the story. Um, there are different things you can look at, but th this will be, I think, a good start. Uh, and if you can hit some of these points uh, or tick them off, uh, you, you will probably be looking at a prosperity gospel church. So I hope that you found this helpful. And if you have any questions or comments, reach out to me. Until I see you in upcoming recordings, God bless you.